Moved to Mike, slides are right there. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm representing Santa Barbara Coastal. We have a couple exciting new projects that leverage SBC. One is a NSF funded project that's looking at, it's mapping uh, macroalgal um, uh, species traits and then using that to predict community composition across depth. Another one is funded by the Department of Energy's RPE program. This is looking at kelp farms as a potential carbon removal strategy. So growing huge amounts of kelp and sinking them, sinking them to the seafloor. Um, a lot of a lot of our work involves using remote sensing to scale up some of our core time series of biomass and productivity with a particular focus on on giant kelp. So, for example, we're using satellite imagery to scale up measurements of giant kelp biomass. Um, we're using drones to start scaling up our measurements of kelp rack. This is this is kelp that gets washed ashore. In terms of challenges, it, it's it's not trivial for to develop the methods and data behind this. It takes a lot of work, particularly since we're we're creating these long standardized time series and, and maintaining them, right? It's not just a, um, you know, looking at it and um, a, a few images. And so the maintenance of these data sets is quite a lot of work. And of course there's limits on, on what we can observe with, with remote sensing. I think that that time series of giant kelp biomass has been a, a success. There's a scaling component of the in situ observations as, as well. We've done a lot of work developing allometric relationships to, to estimate biomass from um, length measurements, measurements of, of kelp length. And then we've developed remote sensing methods with Landsat, 30 meter Landsat imagery to, um, to estimate canopy biomass using those diver measurements. So the x-axis there is this Landsat-based, satellite-based kelp canopy fraction metric. The y-axis is our diver measurements of biomass, and there's a nice, nice match up there. This is, has enabled us to create these time series of kelp biomass at 30 meter resolutions over, over huge areas. Um, so we've extended this data set to include the whole west coast of North America. This includes the southern range limit of kelp, so we can start to do range limit questions that are um, you know, far in geography from, from our site. It extends further north where there's another species of canopy forming kelp that, that, that dominates. I mentioned some of those challenges already. There's certainly also data processing and, and storage challenges, even for relatively simple remote sensing pro problems like extract or separating kelp canopy from water. It takes a long time to develop the methods behind the data set. And then we've had some challenges sharing the data, right? It's just so massive. There's so there's there's some you know nuances. It's it's a little bit difficult to understand um, some of the yeah, some of those nuances. And so sharing this with other non-remote sensors, non-GIS folks has been, been a bit of a challenge. We've overcome some of these challenges with, we have a great deal of remote sensing expertise at the site and, and have leveraged a, a number of other resources like PhD fellowships from, from NASA. Um, some things that I think have made this successful, one are the, the, just the nature of kelp canopy. It's, um, it's so amenable to remote sensing. Um, that retrospective data has been really valuable. We've been able to to, to characterize dynamics from decades before SBC was, was, was initiated. Um, and, and, and the development, the validation, the parameterization is really due to the length and consistency of that, of that diver data from LTER. So there's been a, there's been a, a, a huge amount of, of impact from this, this data. We can characterize spatial variability and trends in phenology, in responses to, to disturbance like marine heat waves. Um, and the spatial variability and the drivers of that productivity. The work has also definitely led to new collaborations and connections. Our, our, our work with NASA is particularly tight. There was uh, recently NASA was, was developing an airborne campaign to, as a precursor to a satellite hyperspectral mission. They you know, targeted the Santa Barbara area and, and because of our work with, with, with the satellite mapping of kelp, that led to um, them planning flight plans around, um, around some of these SB, SBC sites. We're also linked to kelp scientists in other parts of the world, extending these methods to other parts of the world. And then um, coastal managers in California are increasingly um, using, this, using this data. So yeah, thank you.